Hi there, I'm Todd Motto, and I'm going to be teaching you array prototype for each. So the first thing that we want to really consider is what is for each. Array for each is a method that exists on our prototype, and it was introduced in ECMAScript version 5. It's currently supported as well by all modern browsers. Now, array for each is more of an entry level looping tool that will iterate over your array. Here I have these items. And as we iterate over our array of items, we're then passed each value and its index one by one. We could, for example, render some data into the DOM, which is what we're actually going to be doing, so that we can see each of our values that we might want to display for a particular user. Now, you can think of array for each as I want to access my values in my array one by one so that we can do something with them. Each array has elements. This is one element, this is number two element, and this is number three element. It doesn't matter what these elements are. For a typical data structure, we're going to use our array of objects because this is a nice way that we can explore array for each. Now, before we go any further, I want to type the word items, and you can see that we have all these prototype methods, and we can find our for each. Now, before we go any further, let's just have a look at this function signature. Now, because I'm using VS Code, it's actually giving me more TypeScript style definitions. And you can see that these colons here are denoting the type. And VS Code is cleverly picking out the ones that we have inside of here, such as our ID with a type of string. And then we can cross reference those values here. But the main piece that we want to look at is this number one argument, this callback function which then gives us a value, which will be each individual element. It will also give us an index, which is that index of a number inside the array. And the third argument, it will give us an array itself. So putting things together, we have something like this. We have the value, the index, and the array. And then inside the body of the function, we would then go ahead and do something. We also have the second argument to for each, which is the this arg. So if we wanted to, we could in fact change that this argument to something completely different, such as a class if you were binding the this context to the for each method, which isn't as common as you might think. So this is our syntax for for each. What I'll do is just comment these out and then we can play with our for each properly below. Now inside the body of this for each function is where we would access our value. And if we want, we would also access our index as well. Now underneath here, what we're going to do is just look at a basic example of a for each, and then we're going to look at a more complex example. So here we've got an array of strings and we're going to say dot for each. Now you can either use a normal function with the function keyword, or you can use an arrow function. Here we're then going to specify the value. I like to call this the item because our array is of items, so I like to use that plural. And we also have the index. Now inside the body, unlike some of these other prototype methods, we don't actually need to return anything. So don't return, there's no way that we can use anything if we do return. We just simply want to access the item and the index side by side. So you can see that our first log is A, which is the first item in our array. And because arrays are zero based index, it means the first item is considered as the zero item. So that's a crucial thing for any beginners coming to dealing with arrays. And you may introduce bugs if you do not know these things because you may go, oh, the first item in the array is clearly number one, but that's not the case in JavaScript. So with this in mind, let's go ahead and just comment this out. So underneath here, we're finally going to use our items. So let's go ahead and introduce a more realistic scenario with our array for each. We want to display the details of each object inside of our array so we can access things such as the ID, the name and the price and display those to the user. So what we need to do to accomplish this mission is jump into our for each and inside the body of the function, we're going to access our app variable, which I can just reference up here as well, which we're just injecting this piece of text into at the moment. So back to our app, 
all we're going to do is look at setting some inner HTML content. Now, this isn't the most performant way of doing things. This isn't a JavaScript framework we're writing. We're just learning some APIs. So inside of here, we're going to create some template literals. I'm going to start off with a nice list item. Now inside of our list item, we're going to use some ES6 string literal interpolation because we now have access to this item. We're logging it as we iterate each time. Now at the moment, if I hit save, we'll see object object over here, which isn't really what we want. However, that's happening because JavaScript is trying to change our objects over to a string because this is a string. So it's trying to just straight away pass it in. If we were to, however, access the items ID, we now have these nice emojis which represent the IDs of each item. So at this point, we can go ahead and just finish things off. We can say the item dot name. I'm going to put a dash in here just to separate things out. And then we want to also show the user our price variable. So this is all looking nice and great. However, our prices aren't exactly how we want them. What we'll do is just wrap them in brackets so we can create an expression. Inside the brackets, we'll divide it by 100 and then call the toFixed method and pass in a value of two, which you can see cuts the number off at two decimal places. If you want to change this and go to one, you can now see how toFixed works and we're dividing it by 100 because we're using cents here. It's not $399 for a burger. So that's pretty much it for array for each. It doesn't return anything. It simply allows us to log out each item in any way that we choose. We could also pass it to a new array. We could pass data to the server, or we could just simply render things out in the DOM like we've done. Now, as with all of our prototype methods, I want to show you the imperative way of iterating. I call this the for eaching without for each. So let's check out a for in loop that mimics the behavior of for each. So typically we would do something like this. We would say let i equal zero. i is then less than our item's length. And we can then go ahead and increment i. Now instead of getting past our item, like a for each would give us, we're going to have to create a constant and access each individual array element item, like so. We can then reuse our code below, our app.innerHTML, which we can then hit save and everything parses out exactly the same as our for each. So really you could consider for each as the more modern way. Now I'll leave this here for you just to have a look, but we want to finish up with our normal for each. So for each is a nice and clean API. It should be thought of as a one way street. Here I'm simply using it to go and take each item and then render the data. We're not returning anything. We're not asking for anything back. There is no further action taking place. We're simply just rendering those values to the DOM. Now there are some other interesting points about for each. There is no break statement that we would typically use inside of for each. We cannot break or use the continue statement. And similarly, while the imperative for loop gives us a longer and a more typing heavy solution to looping our arrays, we can't actually do things that are a bit more advanced, such as looping in reverse, for which case we'd want to stick with our for in or the for of loop. So that's it for this video. I think we've covered a good amount. We've taken our data structure. We've looked at the syntax for each item. We've then looked at a very basic idea of our for each. We've then implemented for each and looked at a more traditional style of accomplishing a for each loop.